Um, welcome to Frankfurt High School. I'm Cindy Long. I'm an assistant principal. I am backed up by a whole bunch of people here. I just got to be the spokesperson for tonight. Um, we have technology department in the back. We have Mrs. Debbie Bracken and Martin Hale. They're here to help. Mr. Kevin Smith was kind enough to let us roll out in his class and also with Mr. Hale's um, his, his technology class as well. So basically what we want to go through tonight are the acceptable use policy, the student responsibility use policy, and then talk about insurance, get your kids a device, and get you out the door. So we're going to do acceptable use, responsible use, insurance, answer any questions, you get to sign your life away, and then finally we give you a device. Um, I summarized this piece for you, and all of this is available online. If you look at fhs.frankfurtschools.org and look under the technology tab, you can find this policy and you can read it word for word. I summarized this part for you. It talks about how our technology is to be used for educational purposes only. Uh, students are expected to follow all of the rules and to demonstrate good citizenship and ethical behavior at all times. Community Schools of Frankfurt does use a filtering system to track and monitor all computer and internet usage on, the, on our network. And obviously our design in doing this is to have students avoid educationally inappropriate sites. Um, unfortunately, no filter is perfect. So um, we know, and probably you do too, that we can put up as many safeguards as possible and sometimes kids find a way to get through them. So what we want is for students to report anything that they think isn't um, educationally appropriate to a teacher or administrator. Um, as you look at these examples, this certainly isn't an exhaustive list, but these are some online conduct um, examples that could constitute not only a violation of school procedure, but also a violation of federal or state criminal laws. And obviously, um, kids and all of us are subject to any of these things at any time. So when you look at criminal acts, this lists hacking, um, attempting to access computer systems without being authorized to do it, sending threatening emails, um, looking at pornography, vandalism, unauthorized tampering with computer systems. Um, when you look at libel, you're talking about publicly, publicly defaming people. Um, through email, you could be on the internet, um, any way that you would defame people. And then finally, what we see the most out of students, luckily for us, is uh, simply a copyright violation. So that would be plagiarism, taking someone else's words and using them as their own. Um, unfortunately, those things can blow up into a bigger situation than a lot of students think it can. Um, but this is something that we want you to be able to talk to your students about as well. We will soon ask you to sign an acceptable use policy and ask your student to sign one as well. And by signing this, you're stating that you understand that the use of the network and our email, our um, at frankfurt.k12 email, is a privilege, not a right. Um, they, that you also understand that they're owned by Community Schools of Frankfurt and they are not private. Uh, Community Schools of Frankfurt has access to their information at any time that they use on our network. Um, we also ask everyone to understand that Community Schools of Frankfurt administrators will deem what conduct is inappropriate. Um, and if conduct is not, hap if it doesn't happen to be outlined specifically in the agreement, that it still could be labeled as misconduct. Um, we want, obviously, our students to comply with the laws of the United States and the state of Indiana, and we want them to notify an adult immediately if they feel as though something is amiss. So when we go through the acceptable use policy, there are 10 different statements that we want students and parents to understand. And what I'll do is I will read the basic statement, and then I'll let you, I'll give you a couple quick summarizing points. Um, first, it says, I'm responsible for my computer account and email account. This includes keeping passwords private. Um, we want students to recognize that sharing information like that can certainly be detrimental to their account and then to them as a person as well. Um, we don't want them to take a password of anybody else, and we don't want them to give theirs away either. This would include using an email account, saying, oh, just log in as me really quickly. We definitely do not want that to happen. 
Um, number two, I'm responsible for my language. So we want students to remember, just as we expect them to use good language in the classroom, in the hallways, we, accept, we expect them to use appropriate language in any email messages, online postings. A lot of teachers will have um, students perhaps play a game or take a quiz where information that they're putting goes up on the screen. We want them to be responsible when they're doing that. Um, number three states that they're responsible for how I treat other people. This includes email and any other means of communication listed here, blogs, wikis, chat, messaging. Um, we want them to make sure that they're not posting hateful or harassing emails to one another, that they're not using discriminatory or derogatory remarks, um, bullying, harassment, all of those things are certainly prohibited. Number four states that I am responsible for my use of the community schools of Frankfurt's network. So when they're on our network, we want them to use our resp their resources responsibly. Um, it talks about not searching, retrieving, saving, circulating, anything that has to do with hate, offensive, sexually explicit material. All of that stuff would obviously be absolutely inappropriate, not only on our network, but also while using the school computer device. Um, we also want you to understand this last line here. I understand the use of the CSF network for illegal or commercial activities is certainly prohibited. Number five, I am responsible for my conduct on all online sites. So as you're using the internet, um, social networking is a place where a lot of pitfalls could happen. We want students to be responsible for their conduct and to make sure that they're not negatively impacting anyone in our school, whether that be other students, teachers, um, anyone at all. Number six, I'm responsible to be honest when I'm online. Obviously, we don't want them to impersonate someone else, whether that be through a spoof or just pretending to be someone else. Um, this would include creating different accounts. Um, if they got on someone else's email, obviously we don't consider that honest behavior and that is prohibited. Number seven talks about being responsible for protecting the security of the community schools of Frankfurt's network. And what we mean by this is we don't want students to attempt to find the loopholes in um, our filtering system. We don't want students to try to go, go in backwards and hack any accounts. Um, we, we certainly don't want them to interfere with how that would work as it would affect all of us. Um, number eight, I'm responsible for protecting school property. Um, obviously, vandalism on your own device would be prohibited. Vandalism on someone else's device would definitely be prohibited. Um, as we go through this list, it talks about accessing, modifying, or destroying equipment, programs, files, or settings on any computer or technology resource. Number nine, I am responsible for respecting other people's property online. This again talks about the copyright laws and plagiarizing. We want people to cite and give credit to other people's work. And number 10 says I'm responsible for following school rules whenever I publish anything online. Um, when it talks about publishing things online, again, that could be a website, a blog, a wiki, um, any way that they put their information out there. We want kids to understand that it's certainly not safe to publish any personal information, um, whether that be their name, their address, anything that could identify them and make them a target. Um, we also want them to understand that they should never post photos of students with their first and last names included, um, and again, on, on any site. Let me stop there briefly. Do you have any questions about the first 10 examples about acceptable use? So as we moved forward, we took the responsible use policy and tried to make this very student-centered so students would absolutely understand what we're asking them to do. And teachers will remind them often of this in class. So as they look at the responsible use policy, it begins with students and it talks about a number of I will statements. So the first I will statement for students is that they will bring their device to school fully charged each day. As we move to a more specific uh, technological age if students are always searching for a plug and there are only so many plugs and chargers and doing all those things it makes it really hard to use technology so we need them to have the device and bring it charged each day um, same thing I talked about before we're gonna ask students to keep inf private information private 
If they see anybody or anything that violates the responsible use policy, they should notify an adult immediately. We ask them to immediately notify the technology department if there's any damage to their device. We want them to treat our equipment with great care, follow all the policies, rules, and regulations, credit their sources when using other people's work or images, be a good digital citizen, use the technology provided um, by CSF for school use during school hours. And finally, keep the device in the provided case at all times. The list of things students will not. So we ask that they will not use technology to harass, intimidate, ridicule, or harm anyone else. We ask that they not create, download, download or obtain improper application languages, text, or pictures. We don't want them to set a desktop background or a screensaver with something that depicts violence, um, something, that ex something that's explicit um, with language, provocative, pornographic material, all of that would obviously be inappropriate. Um, the next thing talks about how they will not impersonate or pretend to be someone else. Um, we ask that, again, they not give any personal information, including their name, their address, their passwords, their cell phone numbers. Um, we do not want them to take pictures, video, or audio of anyone without their knowledge and permission. Um, we do not want them to search, possess, read, view, or copy inappropriate pictures or text. And I think that's a big one to kind of note for a second. A lot of kids sometimes um, will receive something, whether it be on their phones or on their computers. Um, basically, what we're asking them to do is um, we, we need to know about that, we need a report of that, because it will show up on, on their file as well. And obviously they need to get rid of that. So kids, kids sometimes will use an excuse of, yeah, I didn't even want it, he just, he just sent it to me. Unfortunately, once you're in possession of that material, it, it's your problem if you haven't reported it, okay? Um, obviously we don't want you to also tamper, change, or damage the hardware or the network in any way. Write on, mark on, stick anything on, or make any modifications to the device, the case, or the charging mechanism. We want those to remain um, as we hand them to the students. And finally, and this is a tough one, I think everybody's kind of learned a lesson with their own technology. If you haven't, let me tell you a few stories in my own life. But uh, place my device in jeopardy um, by doing things not limited to, but these are some of the things that we listed as a suggestion. Um, stacking items on top of the device, not a good idea. Um, placing device in extreme weather conditions, whether that be hot or cold. So if your kid leaves their backpack in the car overnight, it's freezing outside, that's certainly going to do damage to the device. We need, we need to teach our students not to do um, those things. Um, using sharp objects on the device, um, picking keys, any of those things. We need them to be really, really careful um, to not put their device in jeopardy. Okay, um, we're asking parents and students both to understand, and these, these are a little bit different, that internet reliability and access when students are not in session at FHS is not the responsibility of the school or the corporation. So students may be on the Wi-Fi here while they're at school, um, but if they expected to be able to reach the Wi-Fi, let's say they're trying to finish up some homework and they're going to sit outside school at four o'clock in the afternoon. We're not responsible for making sure that they're able to get Wi-Fi at that time. Um, electronic paperwork has the potential to be lost and should be stored very carefully, okay? So obviously just because the school gives you a device doesn't mean that we're responsible for how you turn in information, okay? So we need students to be careful with that. Um, the th fourth point here, oh, Nope, there's a third point, sorry. That there may be issues with the internet and technology may not work 100% of the time. We want it to, we sure want it to. Um, we recognize that there are going to be glitches within this system that could happen at any time, okay? Um, we want students and parents to recognize that not bringing a device does not excuse them from classwork, okay? You'll still be required to do that. Um, 
we want students and parents to understand that not all information on the internet is true. I think that sometimes, uh, sometimes we forget those things, even though I think we know that inherently. Um, that students are responsible for verifying information that they find on the internet through other sources. Um, remember that use of our internet network is a privilege, it is not a right, and it could be denied to anyone. Um, that the full use of a CSF owned mobile device, again, that is a privilege and not a right. We can talk more about that in a little while. Um, finally, the technology, even though it is assigned to a student, is the property of community schools of Frankfurt. It is a computer owned device. Uh, school personnel has full authority over the device and may remove it from um, the student for violating any of the aforementioned items. Um, that at the end of the school year, the return of the device, the original charger, and the case in the same condition that it was issued to the student, that has to be followed through or there could be charges. And finally, changes to these procedures are always evolving. And you would be able to, as parents, stay up to date, up to date by looking at our website. Um, when you think about consequences for misusing or not following any of these items, the device could be revoked, it could be taken away from your student, which could make life a little bit more difficult. Um, many, of the, many of the consequences um, could certainly be tied back to other things that are listed throughout our student handbook, and this could move all the way toward um, suspension, expulsion. Obviously, we don't want that to happen, um, so we need, we need people to be responsible with the device and how they use the device. Um, parents, this is your last part here. We need you to understand that while your student is not on school grounds, the, the internet is not filtered. So if they went to McDonald's, for example, where they have free Wi-Fi, there is no filter from community schools of Frankfurt and your student could look up anything that they wanted to. And that would be not our responsibility. That would be your student's responsibility. And again, your responsibility as parents to monitor that. Um, the second bullet talks about, I'm responsible for setting boundaries for device use in my home and off campus. So if you say devices have to be put away every night at 9 p.m., that's your home rule and that would be something that you would enforce at, at your house. Um, as a parent, you are financially responsible for any and all damages to a student's device. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in just a moment. Um, you have the opportunity, it's not a requirement, but an opportunity to purchase insurance for the device, but only during a specific enrollment period. And that enrollment period is from the, the date that the device is issued, which for many of you would be today, until January 12th, 2018. So speaking of insurance, um, we have partnered with a company called Insurat Insuratech. And as you look in this box, it shows you what the insurance is offering. Um, so just to get to the point, I'm a parent, I understand. It's $25 from now until the end of the year. And what it would cover is that it would cover all losses except normal wear and tear, manufacturers, defects. Um, those repairs would be made at a zero dollar deductible. Um, if it's damaged beyond repair or it's stolen, you don't have the device any longer, um, then the company, the we pay, um, we pay $350. So InsuraTech pays $350 for the device. You pay a $50 deductible. Okay. And then finally, um, I don't know if any of you have tried to ship electronics where they talk about guarantees and warranty and all of a sudden you, you pay an outrageous shipping fee. They're including shipping to and from their repair facility. So that's also included. Again, the price is $25. And that's a prorated price because obviously we're approximately halfway through the school year. So they offered it to us for the prorated price, $25 from now until the end of May when we get out of school and students turn devices back in. And again, the enrollment deadline is January 12th, 2018. Um, just to give you a frame of reference, and I know this is a little bit small and I will leave it up here and you can certainly feel free to come forward and look at this. Um, 
more intensively. But these are repair prices for many of the things that could go wrong with a computer um, and what you would pay if you did not have the insurance. Um, so you could look and see that uh, the, the camera, the camera board only is 45.63. If the main board went out, that's $313.06. So that's what you would be saying you're responsible for if you choose not to pay the $25 worth of insurance. And again, that is your choice, okay? So we'll leave those things um, up there so that you guys can see.